Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Down by the River. It's a 5x7 and I painted it a couple weeks back. I think I painted it a couple weeks back. Let's see. Well, I want to take your valuable time. I don't want to take your valuable time. A couple weeks back, more or less. And, um,. Yeah, probably put a little more work into it than I usually do in a 5x7, but I have to say what distinguishes this particular painting is the fact that I amended the reference like two or three times. I kept having issues to the point where I thought, eh, I'm not going to get a painting out of that. Then there was a day I, I left it in my little reference folder. There was a day I sat down and I went, oh, I have some ideas. And most of the ideas I used to pull it off... Um, were based on ignoring even more of the reference and really focusing in on that original thing that I I liked. Now I do this sort of composition all the time. It's an L, I guess you call it an L. Uh, we will have a little balancing bit of uh, landscape in the, uh, um, you know, an R left in the middle there, and uh, so that might actually qualify as a steel yard hard to say it's not much of a focal point um, but uh, I ended up being real happy with this painting and it was because of uh, the huge amount of simplification I did and um, I feel confident now I could maybe go after uh, this motif uh, at a larger size I've done a few like this they were all based on some reference I took while on vacation um, I've had some success with some I sold some um, and then there's some others where I felt like, uh, you know, uh, I was maybe not as successful. But the great thing about having a lot of experience as a painter is that, trust me, you will do far less actual stinkers as you go on down the lane. You'll have good or great or amazing instead of really bad, just okay, and good. <laughs> With maybe an amazing one a year or something like that. That was how I rocked for a long time so you know all I can say is the best way to get good at painting is to just paint your way out of any problems just keep painting treat painting like it was um, an offhand thing uh, now a little later in the video here um, I'm gonna read from a, 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 it's a book I, I don't know when this book came out but I picked it up at a used bookstore maybe 10 years ago uh, came out in 1981. Uh, the painter in it is really good. The paintings are by George Sheripov, and the book is written by Weldon Blake, so very interesting division there. And I actually did have contemplated trying to do something similar with a writer um, that hasn't actually panned out, so um, we'll stay, stay tuned on that front. Notice also I had that interesting little diagonal there on the far right that was kind of mirroring the other diagonal coming over the sky um, at the time I first popped it in I thought yeah that's working out but changed my mind and one of the great things about doing an underpainting like this is that it gives you an opportunity to really move around your composition uh, without sacrificing a lot of work or a lot of fresh color and this book I'm going to read um, there's a, a chapter I don't know if it's a whole chapter. It's a, a few paragraphs. How about that? A section um, that talks about brushwork. I just open it up at random. And uh, yeah, I like to give you guys a break from my usual uh, burbling on. But um, um, before I get into that, so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this painting. Uh, so I had a pretty, uh, it's a fairly naturalistic color here. Um, everything's tinged with a bit of uh, yellow, I'd say. And um, this is painting is all first uh, just one pass. I probably won't go in and do any more to it. And um, this section I'm going to read from the book. Actually, let me pause this because this helicopter. Hold on. Ah, well, while waiting for that uh, helicopter to pass, um, looks like I did this painting a month ago, over a month ago. <laughs> so I'm remembering two weeks, but it was actually Christmas Eve. Yeah. Anyway. Um, with, you know, it's got a kind of naturalistic uh, color approach. I want to actually look at a bit of it myself because I, I can only see things as um, 
Yeah, you know, just your 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 regular type greens. I might have done a little bit of a, a purple thing. Um, I do think the edges are quite good, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about uh, when we start getting into this book here. Um, but fairly naturalistic color. The main thing that I went after here, and the main challenge was to reconcile the composition. So this mass of trees on our um, right, uh, it, you look at three, maybe four trees if you're counting, uh, and that's basically three, and then the one in the back there. Um, in the reference, that's like eight or nine trees. So uh, just a good, um, and, and they're going every which way. And there are two um, in the reference, I've just gone by memory, that are actually leaning at that diagonal. And they look kind of cool. I almost went with them, but I thought, no, it's just one. And who knows, you know, it might be a case uh, in the larger painting where I could have done that. Um, but uh, here it was definitely a uh, discretion was the better part of valor. So um, we will get back into the painting a little bit. I want to read a little bit from this book. So quite an old book. It's called A Complete Guide to Landscape Painting in Oil. I got it at the Recycle Bookstore in San Jose, California a long time ago. By Wendon Blake, Paintings by George Cheripov. I wonder how they pulled that off. We are on page um, 73. <clears throat> and we're going to skip on down to where it says, Don't brush your paint to death. <laughs> if you look over a professional's shoulder, which is what you are doing right now, as he works, you'll discover that he not only applies his paint with a minimum of strokes, but does a minimum of blending. He doesn't apply a stroke and then poke at it again and again to smooth it out, spread it, or blend it. Most of the time he paints in strokes of flat color, creating gradations and subtle changes of color by placing wet strokes side by side. He doesn't scrub the paint and blend the strokes into one smooth, continuous tone. That's the total amateur move, so if you're doing that, just cut it out. And you know what? Oil paint loves to do that. It's so easy. You know, if you're working in acrylic, that might be, um, you know, the paint gets real sticky and dries on you real fast. But um, with oil paint, it's open. You could just blend everything so to the point where it looked like a real greasy, greasy uh, airbrush painting. Yeah. Uh, he lays the strokes side by side, one over the other, letting them blend naturally as they overlap. Yeah, and the best way to get these transitions say you've got a sky and some trees and the trees are much darker than the sky um, the best thing you can do is paint an intermediate color between the two in that area rather than trying to blend them together yeah or there's a lot of other little techniques you do like pulling the paint a certain way that's when I have a, a zillion edge strategies as I've said time and time again oh by the way I should remind you in the members area there is the live version of this video. It's pretty cool because it'd be an hour and a half or so, so it's not not one of these seven hour one wonders, um, which are good too, but um, <clears throat> in the live videos, I'm always passing along tips and tricks and things and insights as I'm painting. Um, I'm in the fight, I'm in the, in the fray, so it's not like I'm talking for every minute of the live video. Uh, it's not even like it's an instruction video. It's more like you're there, um, you're a fly on the wall, and I'm giving you tips and tricks and insights. So the members area, uh, you can get to it underneath the video. There's a join button. So check that out if you'd like. Ah, in contrast, back to the book. In contrast with professionals, beginners are obsessed with smooth, velvety tones and have a passion for blending one color into another. But the more you brush a color, the less vital it becomes. With every stroke of the brush, even the brightest tube color will gradually lose vitality. So the professional learns to avoid the repeated back and forth blending stroke that creates velvety gradation. He uses the word velvety. I use the word greasy. But turns colors to mud. Yeah, it does. And destroys the texture of the paint. He may do a bit of blending when he paints something as smooth as a clear sky or pond but who generally paints in flat strokes, placing various tones side by side and letting them blend in the viewer's eye. Let's say you're painting a rock formation and you're trying to make the rocks look really round. The wrong way is to paint the lights, half-tones and shadows, and reflected lights, 
and lots of small picky strokes then blend them all together so the rocks look like so many billiard balls the right way is to paint these tonal areas in bold ragged strokes laid side by side blending them slightly by overlapping one wet stroke into another um, by the way you know sometimes I'll do there's I'll do a little blending uh, I might use the flat side of my brush I'm always very subtle with it though and one of my favorite techniques for blending might be to get a paper towel and just kind of pap at the painting a little bit and that would be just to take off the edgiest bits of the um, where the paints overlapping uh, in some areas I don't want everything I would use the term in my live um, sessions of crusty I don't want things looking all crusty and etched looking and sharp you do in some spots, but definitely not across the entire painting. I sort of hear that helicopter coming back, so I may have to pause again. I don't know what they're up to. So, rock formation. Uh, the rough strokes of flat color will seem to blend when the viewer looks at your painting from a distance. The rocks won't only look round, they look rough and hard, as rocks really are. Yeah, I thought I heard that helicopter coming back, but I guess not. Anyway, I can't find that section of the book again, but that was the entire section. And um, I talk about this all the time. It, you, you're better off um, doing an honest, expressive painting, even if you have a limited range of skills and experience. Because um, the more you overwork your painting, the robot part of your mind it says you are doing a good job we are very good we are doing a good job we are copying this photo exactly and we are doing a very good job it, that isn't the way things should be working you know better off you make a stroke um, pause think about it make another stroke you know uh, now as you gain in um, experience and um, you, you 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 learn what works best you know these things become internalized it's not like you need to um, fight the robot as much you know uh, one great tip that I got really early on and I can't say that I ever actually did much of it but <clears throat> being a professional illustrator I understood that things needed to be fresh even when I was overworking things and not actually following that advice but um what this this advice was uh i thought very good and the guy basically suggested that you count your strokes now you would be up in the thousands uh, it probably would work best for a small painting or study but if you count your strokes it really makes you aware of the value of each stroke and each stroke should have its own value when you start overworking things and losing those strokes what you lose is the um, expressive and emotional impact of your work and even if you are an amateur you're capable of creating very expressive and emotional work and that should always be your goal um, things like uh, you know getting good at rendering um, getting good at edges you know your edges might be rough they might the painting might not look finished but if you stop yourself from overworking it you still have a lot better paintings laying around than those ones where you just start to, I, the other analogy I would say is you know you turn turn the painting into a bunch of rice grains every stroke is like about the size of a rice grain and that's if you're not doing this velvety slash greasy blending move if you're doing that you need to stop it immediately and if you're overworking or over brushing stop that too just enjoy um, and work with a bigger brush there's another tip I've, I've always said that on this channel but that one of the main reasons for that is to counteract this tendency of just overdoing things you make make a big expressive stroke with a beautiful color and people will admire your work far more anyway that does it for today's video thank you so much for joining me I really really appreciate it and I appreciate all the wonderful comments we've been getting on the channel uh, I love comments you can leave a like if you want but a comment means so much more and uh, even if it's like enjoyed the video something like that anyway until I come back with a, another uh, painting another video presentation for you uh, do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself and your family 
the world's a bit crazy right now, but just relax and uh, appreciate each day as it comes. And um, while you're doing that, be sure to stay out of trouble.